H-A-P-P-Y I'm H-A-P-P-Y I know I am, I'm sure I am I'm H-A-P-P-Y I know I am, I'm sure I am He's H-A-P-P-Y oh. <laughs> Wrong room, mate. No, I don't think so. The nurse brought me here. Well, where's Seymour? Seymour? I don't know. He was here when I left. Perhaps he's gone home? Gone home, nursing a compound fracture. Do me a favour. <laughs> compound fracture? Whereabouts? Leg. Three places. Tibia and fibula. He's held together with a metal pin. And there's a danger of infection. He won't be going home in hurry. You're lost without your legs, aren't you? I mean, legs are important, aren't they? They ought to hear him. He's a ruddy ballroom dancer. <laughs> oh. Still? You've got to look on the bright side. What bright side? He'll never do the quick step again. Couldn't even manage a slow waltz. Where's the bright side? Well, at least he's in the right place. They can do wonders here. Don't say that to him. He only came in with an ingrowing toenail. <laughs> Fell off the operating table. <laughs> they say his leg snapped like a dead twig. Oh, dear. What's the matter? I don't feel very well. Well, of course you don't feel very well. That's why you're here. He's gone all right. His mindos are missing. <laughs> Fancy him going without saying goodbye. Perhaps he's gone to another ward. Oh, well, he might have done. I've been down in X-ray for hours. If I have any more, I'll be lighting up in the dark. <laughs> Plus, they may have moved him because of Glover. Is it serious? Take a look. I don't like to. Go on, won't do any harm. He's having his back rubbed. Yeah, treats this place like a flaming sauna. <laughs> what's wrong with him? Nothing. And what's he doing here? Undermining the health service. He's turned this place upside down. He's got him running all over the place. He's supposed to be a gentleman. He even brought his own sugar tongs. Middle class twit. <laughs> you shouldn't be in here with the serious cases. Are you a serious case? Of course I'm a serious case. Don't I look it? I'm supposed to have peace and quiet. Not you get that with Glover. What's wrong with you? I don't really know what it is. Mm. What's your name? Norman. Norman Binns. Ah, Roy Figgis. Welcome to Jack the Ripper Ward. <laughs> well, what are your symptoms? I've had a lot of pain down here. Mm, down there, eh? Well, that could be anything. You're a growing lad. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they say it might be my appendix. Oh, yes, well, they always say that. They say it doesn't serve any purpose. We don't use it. Well, there's lots of things we don't use, but we don't want them whipping out, do we? <laughs> Are you, uh, you having surgery? Well, they said they wanted a peep. A peep? <laughs> you're going to have a laparotomy, that's what you're going to have. Do you want to see something horrible? What? Do you want to see something really horrible? I don't know. <laughs> Crikey! <laughs> Thirty-five stitches in there, mate. <laughs> Told me they were going to take a peep. Turned out to be a flaming coat strip. <laughs> if God's so brilliant, then why didn't he give us zip fasteners? <laughs> you all right? I've just come over a bit queer. Oh, no, I'm not surprised. I'm not right down here, you know. You can always tell. I'm not joined together properly. I keep telling them there's something wrong down here, but they won't listen. I can't cough. I daren't. If I coughed, it'd be the end of me. If I was all right, I'd be able to cough. I'm not joined up properly. My skin doesn't fit me anymore. <laughs> I've been mutilated by the National Health Service. Who's doing you? Mr Thorpe. Gordon Thorpe. <laughs> he seemed very nice. You haven't met him with a knife in his hand. <laughs> Do you think I ought to get into bed? I'm uh, feeling rather faint. I wouldn't if I was you. I should keep walking around while you've still got the use of your limbs. <laughs> I think my mother would like to see me tucked in. No, I'm sure she'd prefer to remember you upright. Uh, besides, uh, who said you could have the bed by the window? Him in the white coat. Was it Gupta? I think that was his name. Well, there you are, then. He doesn't know anything. He doesn't understand the situation. There's been a lot of bad feeling regarding this bed. Has there? Glover set his heart on it. 
Why? He wants to be near the window. He wants to see the daffodils. Well, perhaps I want to see the daffodils. Listen, we all want to see the bleeding daffodils. That's not the point. It's a question of who's entitled. Well, I've been put here. So was Seymour. You know what happened to him? You know what Glover did? Only loosened the wing nut on his crutch. <laughs> I never thought I'd feel sorry for Seymour. Just getting his confidence, he was. Swinging around on his crutch. I thought he was going to break into a Velita. <laughs> and he just telescoped. I've never seen anyone look more surprised. <laughs> Nearly broke the other ruddy leg. Oh, dear, well, I don't know what to do. I mean, who is entitled? Well, I should say the person who's been here the longest. Well, who's been here the longest? Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Would you like to have the bed? Thanks very much. That's very kind of you. <laughs> And that's what we mean when we say that a thing is as welcome as flowers. Oh, no. Are you in pain? No, I'm a music lover. <laughs> this is no time for levity. Let's uh, see where the trouble is, should we? Down here, is it? Good Lord. Yeah. What about that, then? Oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> not for me to comment, of course. No, of course not. Not a pretty sight. I've seen Christmas turkeys in better shape. <laughs> Not to worry, old chap. You're in good hands now. Who did this to you? You did. <laughs> what? But you've only just been admitted, Mr. Uh... Bin. No, I'm Figgis. Figgis? Not X-ray Figgis. Well, yes, they have taken a few. A few? They cover a whole wall down there. <laughs> like a map of the underground. <laughs> Stop! What is the matter? What is the matter? Is something wrong? Something wrong? It's another cock-up, Gupta. <laughs> Patient in the wrong bed again. You know what happened last time? Someone lost a perfectly good gallbladder. <laughs> Can't afford any more slip-ups. We need more efficiency. Get some labels in these blighters. That is all very well. I have been rushed off my feet all morning. Everything is happening all together. It is chaos, chaos, chaos. I'm fed up. I tell you, I wish I was back in Delhi. Come on now, Gupta. Don't let them see you like this. They'll lose confidence. That lower lip's drooping again. The point is, we can't go around losing patience. Doesn't look good. Mm. Now, if there's figures, where's bins? Oh, I see. Got a comedian in our midst, have we? Sitting here a few minutes and hopping into other people's beds. Wasn't the other bed comfortable enough for you? Didn't it suit the contours of your body? Perhaps you'd like a spring interior. Well, I don't want to put you to any trouble, Doctor. You're trying to be funny. <laughs> no. Now, look. Um, uh, Norman, it is Norman. Yes, we haven't made a very good start, have we? No. I'm sure we can do much better than that if we really try. What do you say? Well, it wasn't your fault, Doctor. Of course it wasn't my fault, you blithering idiot! <laughs> now, uh, Norman, it's important that we have complete trust and understanding. This is a very, very serious business. Can't afford to make mistakes. Do you make many? <laughs> Where's the pain? It's down here. It was a present from the lads, for good luck. I should hang on to it. <laughs> you won't need luck, Norman. I'm sure everything is going to be straightforward. Now, is the pain constant or does it come and go? It comes and goes, Doctor. Mm-hmm. Leo? It comes and goes, Doctor. <laughs> I knew it was going to be one of those days. I think he's half-witted. Keep an eye on him. <laughs> Now, what we're going to do, Norman, is take you down to the theatre late and have a peep inside. Have a look around. And if we find something we don't like, we're going to snip it off. <laughs> Word hurt. You won't feel a thing. What you've got to remember is it's all in a day's work. It's as natural for me as, uh, as you riding a bicycle. I fell off last week. <laughs> He's going to need something to relax him. What about a tap with a cricket bat? <laughs> What's going on there? Why are those curtains drawn?
Now, if you could just do the muscles around the back of my neck. You've got such sensitive hands. My God, you have been in the sun, haven't you? Lover! <laughs> what are you doing here? Just having a massage. Shoulders are a bit stiff. All this lying around doesn't suit an active man. I thought we discharged him. He was readmitted on Saturday. Why? I think it was raining. <laughs> what does he say is the matter with him this time? Well, he collapsed in the supermarket and fell into the deep freeze container. <laughs> he was readmitted complaining of cardiac arrest and frostbite. <laughs> Just our luck. Now, what seems to be the matter, Mr. Glover? The old trouble, Mr. Thorpe. The old trouble? There is no old trouble. We've examined you thoroughly, given you every test. What are you trying to hide? You can tell me the truth, I can take it. What's the real problem? You're the real problem. It's all in the mind, Glover. How many times do I have to tell you there is nothing wrong with you? Are you sure? Absolutely. Well, this is great news. Let me get out of bed. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with me. I never thought I'd hear those words. I'll be able to lead a full life again. <laughs> oh, don't, don't worry, it's only a momentary weakness. I'm all right. There's nothing wrong with me. Uh, would you do me a favour, Thorpe, and put that in writing? Why do you want it in writing? Uh, it's just for the insurance people. I was thinking of increasing my cover, especially after the dream. What dream? <coughs> well, it's always the same. I'm rowing across this lake and I see this pale, shrouded figure standing at the water's edge. He... He lifts a ghostly trumpet to his lips and calls out, Archie Glover! Come in, your time is up. <laughs> ah. Well, uh, perhaps it wouldn't do any harm to take another look at you. Keep an eye on him, Gupta. Keep an eye on all of them. There could be trouble. Oh, Doctor! My mother asked me to give you this. For me? That's what she said. Oh, well, I didn't expect. I, I shouldn't really accept. Thank you, Norman. Do you know, there are days in midst, not very many, but from time to time, and everything seems worthwhile. Now, Mr. Binns, we need a few details. We don't appear to have your sample. My what? The urine sample. I've just given it to the doctor. I know I am, I'm sure I am. H A P P Y. likes me. Oh, Gupta's all right. He's very good with sick people. Terrible with healthy ones, mind you, but he can't have everything. Doctor doesn't like me either. I think he's got his knife into me. Not yet, he hasn't. Well, you shouldn't have given him that bottle. That was your first mistake. But they said I was to bring a sample. A sample? Looked like a year's supply. <laughs> you only needed a small bottle. I tried that. I had trouble with the neck. <laughs> Need to be too small. I always use a tonic bottle. You see, off to a flying start straight away. That gives them a social advantage over you before they've even seen him. They'll have him down as a gin and tonic man. No wonder he gets preferential treatment. If I'd have wanted preferential treatment, I'd have had a private room. You don't need one, mate. The way the nurse has fallen over you, they think he's got money. They think he's going to whip him back to the ancestral home for a cucumber sandwich and a quick go with a croquet mallet. <laughs> you should see it, Fig. Ivy-clad walls, mullioned windows. It's a different world. Stands the church clock at ten to three. And is there honey still for tea? Yeah. Yeah. Not that I'd expect a yobbo to appreciate it. A yobbo? Who are you calling a yobbo, middle-class twit? <laughs> no need to fall out. 
We're all in the same boat now. If we're all in the same boat, why does he always get his cocoa before me? <laughs> and the extra biscuit. No, you'll find you're on your own round here, mate. You've got to stand up for your rights. Oh, I don't know about that. Listen, just because they've taken your clothes doesn't mean they've taken your identity. You're still an individual. If you're gonna go, go with a little dignity. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm gonna be all right. Dr. Thorpe said it'd be straightforward. Well, they always say that. Why do you think they wear those masks? I thought it was to stop germs. No, it's so you won't know who's done it. <laughs> it's like a million of the Ku Klux Klan down there. I feel faint again. You know your trouble, too much imagination. You'll be all right, as long as you haven't upset anyone, interfered with the efficient running of the hospital. Do you think we ought to change back? Because I don't think they were very pleased. It's not a question of whether they're very pleased, it's whether we're pleased. We're the patients. I've told you, you've got to stand up for your rights. As a matter of fact, I'm very pleased. The view is superb, and the bed's very comfortable. Yes. <laughs> I'm surprised in the circumstances. What circumstances? Oh, haven't they told you? Poor Seymour went this morning. I know that. I wonder where he went. To a better place. <laughs> what? Oh, if only I'd been kinder to him, Fig. After all, he never did me any harm. I hope he can forgive me. You don't mean it. I... I don't believe it. It's true. <laughs> Have a minto. <laughs> You're not eating the poor devil's mintos. <laughs> well, he couldn't take them with him. They were all... they were already sticking together. He went very quietly in the end. He just turned to me and smiled and said, You can have my mintos, Archie. Those were his last words, lying right where you are now. <laughs> yes, well, that puts a different complexion on things. It's obvious I can't use the bed now. If you like sleeping on his grave, uh, we'll have to change back. I don't want to change back. Look, I knew the bloke. You don't think I'm going to sleep on his deathbed, do you? Well, I'm not sleeping on a deathbed. Come on, what do you think you're doing? I'm standing up for my rights. Never mind your rights. You move out of my mind. You've got a thick ear. Get out of it. You can have this job. I'll open a restaurant. <laughs> Do you mind, Gutley? Lower your voice. Show a little respect for Seymour. Why should I show respect for Seymour? He's lucky he's gone home. Gone home? <laughs> he wasn't feeling very well. Said he couldn't stand this place any longer. You said he was dead. I said he'd gone to a better place. I'll get you for that. If you come near me, I'll tear your stitches out. Oh, I wish you hadn't said that. Now, come on, Figgis. They want to do some more tests on you. Oh, I'm not having any more x-rays. My hair's beginning to fall out. <laughs> I'm already radioactive. Oh, dear. I think I've done it again. <coughs> well, it's that bad. He's going to hound you until he gets it back again, you know. He's ruthless. He used to drive a ten-ton lorry before he came in here. Not used to people standing in his path. What do you think I should do? Well, the best thing that you can do is change with me. No, no, I don't think they'd like that. Oh, they'll understand. You see, they know. They know the sands of time are running out for Archie Glover. They say there's nothing wrong with you. Of course they do. They're just trying to reassure me. But I know. I'm burnt out, Norman. I've been too rash. I've abused my body. <laughs> That's why I'm here. Well, I haven't abused my body and I'm here. <laughs> Beginning to wish I had now. At least I'd have something to think about. No, don't say that, Norman. Don't say that. There may still be time for you. Oh, if only I'd taken more care, had the checkups and the x-rays. Well, I think it's just your luck. I had an uncle who went to East Africa. He was very careful about his health. He had injections for malaria, beriberi, blackwater fever, sleeping sickness, typhoid and cholera. He'd only been there a few days and an elephant trod on him. Well, at 
At least he didn't get malaria. He didn't have time. Don't mention time to me, Norman. It's a commodity I'm very short of. All I wanted to see were the daffodils tossing their head in sprightly dance, the perfection of a newly formed leaf, the beauty of a last spring. Is that too much to ask? No. Then move over. Are you sure it'll be all right? Oh, yes, Gupta, I understand. He's an Indian. <laughs> They're very sensitive, gentle people. <laughs> I knew it. I missed the tea again. Three hours I've been down there. They're looking for something. I know they are. What do you think it is? I don't know, but the last thing they use looks strangely like a metal detector. <laughs> hey, hang about. What's he doing in that bed? He wanted to see the daffodils tossing their heads in sprightly dance. Look, we all wanted to see the daffodils tossing their heads in sprightly dance. Why should have the hear of the best of everything? Come on, Glover. Hey, look at me when I'm talking to you. I wouldn't disturb him. <laughs> well, why is he staring at the wall like that? He's just had an operation. What do you mean? There's nothing wrong with him. There is now. It wasn't due for an operation. I know. He had mine. <laughs> what? I think there's been a mix-up with the beds. Well, couldn't you have said something? I didn't realise until they brought him back. <laughs> Do you think he'll be very angry? <laughs> well, he won't be very pleased when he wakes up and finds he's got a vital organ missing. <laughs> It's only his appendix. I don't care. He may have been attached to it. <laughs> and where is it now, eh? Down there in a bucket. <laughs> Typical of the inefficiency of this hospital. Now, figures, I hope you're not grumbling again, spreading gloom and despondency. Remember, in every day and every way, I'm getting better and better. Well, you might be. I'm certainly not. <laughs> what about my operation? It's been bungled. And I've heard there's a scalpel missing. Nonsense. <laughs> we don't leave scalpels in people. Not like leaving your umbrella in a restaurant. We count them in and we count them out. We work with foolproof efficiency. I mean, look at Norman here, sitting up and taking notice. You'd never believe he's just had an operation. He hasn't. <laughs> what? I don't understand. It was performed this afternoon. If he hasn't had it, who has? He has. <laughs> People have to keep changing beds all the time. <laughs> Mistakes are bound to happen. How's he taking it? I don't know. Just keep staring at that wall. <laughs> Hello, old chap. Now, there's nothing to worry about. You've been down to the theatre. We've had a little peep inside. And we've removed something, oof, no bigger than your finger, huh? Something we haven't used in years. Something that's more trouble than it's worth. How are you feeling, Archie? Tired. Hmm. I'm not surprised. He just removed your appendix. Oh. I think he's trying to say something, Doctor. Oh. What is it, old chap? I know I am, I'm sure I am, I'm H-A-P-P-Y. Yes, I'm H-A-P-P-Y. I'm H-A-P-P-Y. I know I am, I'm sure I am, I'm H-A-P-P-Y. Oh, yes, I'm H-A-P-P-Y. Yes, I'm H-A-P-P-Y. I know I am, I'm sure I am. Yes, I'm H-A-P-P, H-A-P-P, only when I lie. H-A-P-P-Y.